In the studio, we've got Chris Butler-Stroud, who is the Chief Executive of Whale and Dolphin Conservation, and Eric Van Sebel, who's an oceanographer at Imperial College London. And from Western Supermare, uh, we're joined there by Domino Albert, who's UK manager of the charity Project Aware. Uh, Domino, let's start with you, if we can, down there in Western Supermare. Uh, Pro Project Aware, what, what are you trying to do with that? What, what's the awareness that you are trying to develop? So, Project Aware is a global... Um, marine conservation charity. Uh, we work mainly but not exclusively with scuba divers and we activate them to take action in their local community. We have a citizen science programme where we collect marine debris data but from underwater. So we bring a complete different uh, perspective to the global marine debris crisis, collecting uh, data and quantifying the quantity, the, um, the, the amount and type of debris that is found underwater. And Chris, when it ends up underwater, it becomes a problem for species that you're interested in. Talk to us about the kind of impact it's having. Well, we're beginning to see plastics um, throughout much of the oceans, and really we're just at the beginning of the impact, and that's the, the real message, and I think why this campaign by Sky is so important. It's it's not just what the plastic is out there, it's actually the tidal wave of plastic that's coming and we're beginning to see happen. So, for example, we've seen fin whales, the second largest animal that's ever lived on this planet, with um, lacerations inside the animal from plastics from DVD cases. We saw a stranding last year of sperm whales off the European coast, including the UK, and four of those animals had plastic sheeting and plastic bags blocking their feeding areas. It There's no question about having a neutral or benign effect. It's it's potentially killing them. It's potentially killing them, and in some cases we believe it really is killing them and it's leading to further deaths. The build-up of microplastics and other plastics, we're really just at the beginning of all that, and I think we're beginning to see it coming through in the research. There's only initial stages of it, but this is most probably a fair representation of what really is to come in terms of what we're going to face for marine life. Eric Van Sabi, in terms of prevention rather than cure, we'd rather do prevention, wouldn't we? Because we don't have a way of curing this problem, at least not yet. Absolutely. There's so much plastic in the ocean right now. As you said, 8 million tonnes every single year, and that is just coming in. And the really scary thing is that we can account for only 1% of all the plastic on the ocean. 99% of all the plastic that's out there, we don't know actually where it is. It could be on the ocean floor, it could be on our beaches, it could be in the stomachs of whales and other animals. But they, they seem to be hot spots, don't they, within our oceans, yeah. certain areas where the tide is, 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 con exactly. is concentrating and massing this stuff. Yeah, so what the ocean is doing is it's constantly moving around the plastic. So if you get a a bottle like this and you would throw it in the ocean here from say Somerset or so, then it doesn't stay there, it goes around with the currents and as it goes the waves and the sun break it down into smaller and smaller pieces. And these pieces they get, um, algae start growing on them and that weighs them down so they start slowly sinking. The other thing that the algae do of course is that fish come along and think that it is a piece of algae rather than a piece of plastic. So that's a big source of, in, of, of fish eating it is just mistaken a piece of plastic. Chris, from a campaigning perspective, you rarely get the, get the opportunity to do this in the sense that you are appealing directly to people's en sense of enlightened self-interest. You know, you can talk about what's happening to blue whales and most of the time that feels a fairly abstract concept to most people. When you say actually it applies to the fish that you eat, they see a direct connection with their own health, right? Absolutely. But the whales and the dolphins basically act as the alarm call for us. We're beginning to see things happening to them which we will also see happen to humans at some stage. So 20 years ago we saw things like PCBs starting to be dumped into the oceans and we started to see those coming into marine species being concentrated in the blubber being passed on to their calves. We're seeing now those same things acting with plastic as vectors being taken into other animals, including human beings. And you're right, humans have to realise that protecting the marine ocean isn't just about protecting wildlife, there will be something about protecting themselves as well, which would be a benefit. Let's just go back to Domino Albert, who's uh, at Western Supermed. Domino, are we absolutely, definitively, 100% certain that when it comes to how long it takes to degrade a plastic bag, a plastic bottle, the stuff that we've got here in our studio today, we are talking about decades, actually we're talking about hundreds of years. Are we absolutely sure that's true? 
Well, we're, we're living in a throwaway society, but when you think twice, uh, away doesn't exist. So when somebody throw away a plastic bottle and that plastic bottle makes its way to the ocean, uh, plastic doesn't biodegrade, it, it, it fragments into tiny um, pieces of plastic, which is called microplastic. And, and, and it, it go away doesn't exist. So we have to think twice when we throw away plastic because it doesn't go away. That is, in a sense, part of the problem, that the fact that you've got this enormous, in terms of the physics of the thing, this enormous force, kinetic energy exerted by the seas in terms of that grinding action. And actually, when you see what it does to a beach, you think, wonderful. When you see when it takes a large piece of plastic, turns into a smaller piece of plastic, making it easier to be mistaken by sea life, then you realise you've got a problem. Yeah, and, you, and of course, there's no way that you can clean up the small, uh, small particles. If you find a plastic bottle like this on a beach, then anybody in their right mind would pick it up and actually collect it. And that's something that you, you can actually do at home uh, on your beach walk to clean up the problem. Because the thing is, of course, that something that's on the beach, the next storm will take it back out to sea. So on the beach is not away from the ocean, it's just temporarily there. If that, if that is where you take it out, then you actually save the ocean but you can only do that with big pieces of plastic you can't sieve the entire beach you can't sieve through the sand because most of the plastic particles the microplastic they are so small you won't even be able to recognize them on the sand Chris a lot of the projections that environmentalists get involved in are guesswork uh, but we are pretty sure because we know rates of consumption are what they are that we will get to around about 2050 and in terms of weight there'll be more of this stuff in the sea than there will be fish life itself. It's yeah, incredible. this is absolutely true. And if we look at even the Danube in Austria at the moment, we've got more plastic than we do have fish larvae in that river. So the, the information that's coming through in terms of the impacts, we're right on the beginning of. In terms of how much is there, we know that we're producing more plastic than the weight of human beings every year now. We know that we're having about 8 million tonnes go into the oceans. Projections are saying that could be 100 plus million tonnes by 2050. We are standing at the cusp of the disaster which we can do something about. We, we are late on certain issues like climate change. On this, if we take action, we have government action, we have business, we have consumers, we have groups working together, then we can really do something about it. And I think we can prevent that from happening in 2050. Domino Albert, when you talk to people down there in Western Supermare, further afield with other parts of the West, the West Country, are you pushing it an open door? Is this a, a subject that people are getting their heads around and beginning to understand that action is required? Well, for, for most people, uh, marine debris is very much out of sight, out of mind. Um, and that's why the work that the scuba divers are doing to show the underwater perspective of the problem is very important. 70% um, of plastic sink on the seabed. So with divers showing this underwater uh, perspective of the, the global crisis, we can show uh, striking photos um, and we also sh can share data with other, group, other groups focusing on, on beach cleanups and encourage people to take action. And for people not living by the sea, uh, it's very easy to think that it, it's not for them, uh, but 80% of um, marine debris comes from land. So changing behavior and tackling the problem at source is very, very important. We need to prevent marine debris to make its way to the ocean mm. because when it gets to the ocean, it's kind of too late, the damage is done. Uh, so we need to show the data, share the data, work together with other groups, partner with um, stakeholders, industry leaders, the government to find solution. We can all take action as individuals to make a difference. Uh, and it starts with re reducing plastic, being more aware of the plastic consumption that we have, uh, say no to plastic straws, easy steps that will all contribute towards solutions. And, and we need to find solutions now before we get to a, a, a no turning point. Mm. Eric, you know, uh, Dominic, they make an interesting point in the sense that, you know, you've got an individual decision you can make about whether you really need to use that plastic straw or whether you just use, you wash up the cup and use the cup. Uh, you've already made clear this is, this is not a problem that you can be parochial about. You throw so something ends up in the sea, yep. off Western Supermare, years later it ends up somewhere on the other side of the world. 
There are parts of the developed world which are going to be using more and more and more of this stuff. Perhaps the rate of increase might be greater there, given population changes than it is in the Western world. But this is ultimately the ultimate global problem, isn't it? It is, and it connects us all, because the ocean doesn't care where the plastic comes from. It doesn't care whether a piece of plastic is thrown from a beach here in Britain or somewhere in Angola. Plastic is plastic, and the fish that, that, get, that eat it don't care. So we really need to collaborate, and we need to think about better plastics, about better waste management systems, and about better cleaning up of our rivers and our beaches. And if we do that on a global scale, then the levels of plastic, as Chris also said, are probably, they are high, but what's to come is even worse. So really, we need to make sure nothing more comes in. Chris, you're leaving us with a sense that this is an area of science, perhaps a little implausibly, which is in its infancy. When we think about the impact of this stuff on marine life, we don't really know where it's going. We, we don't. And I, th I think we, are, we really are on that cusp of a lot of really good research, some of the stuff that Eric's now doing, that's actually going to come through and show us more and more information. But we do, we do have an opportunity. And I think, as the campaign says, um, it isn't about just every single action being a drop in the ocean. All of that does come together to really make a difference. And if we think about the marine life that we're trying to protect, uh, whales and dolphins now are, are ocean engineers. They're moving nutrients around the ocean. They're actually carbon sinks. We're now finding they're actually contributing to help mitigate uh, our climate change issues. If we can do something to protect them, we definitely will end up protecting the whole of the planet and ourselves. And I think with campaigns like this, we have this huge opportunity. There's an economic opportunity here mm. in terms of recycling, reclaiming, reusing, actually burning some of these plastics. And those countries like those developing countries, if we in the developed countries can actually develop the technologies, assist them, we will be benefiting ourselves and we will be benefiting all the marine life like the whales and dolphins that are in the oceans for years it's to come. It's based on an assumption that people get it though isn't it i just wonder domino albert whether actually that might be a bit too subtle uh, for some people who you know as you say have got used to the idea of the disposable throwaway society might there actually be an argument that says look if you're going to use this stuff if you love the convenience of of drinking out of a plastic bottle using cotton bud on a plastic stem and throwing it away without thinking twice about it then fine but you need to pay a price taxation tax extra taxation on plastic goods is that a goer well, I think what we need to do is to, to prevent plastic from becoming waste um, and, and working towards a more circular economy rather than linear economy where a product has a beginning and an end. We don't want plastic to uh, become waste because when it becomes waste, then it, it, it makes its way to the ocean, to our landfill, it becomes a pollutant. Uh, if plastic uh, is recycled and used properly and reused, um, then, then plastic in itself is not, um, is not a problem. It's it, the single-use plastic. When, when you use something once and throw it away, when you know that there is no way and that plastic throw will last forever or for a very long time in our environment, it, it, there is no excuse for, for single-use. There is no excuse for single use. You could almost turn it into a slogan, couldn't you? Domino, Eric, Chris, thanks for your patience today. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much indeed.